Hey guys, Tom Matthews here uh, with uh, one more video on the Keithley 617. Uh, this Keithley that I've got here has got the LMC662 uh, AIM uh, dual uh, femto amp op amp in it. It's supposed to be good to three femto amps. Um, and then I put it in there to replace the uh, dual JFET. Um, this unit has warmed up overnight for about 12 hours. Um, in order to get this low on femto amp stability, you need to warm up at least several hours. I recommend overnight is a good, good idea. Um, I got it on the lowest current range um, with a uh, dummy cover on the um, triaxle input, you know, just to protect from stray, um, you know, electric fields back there. Uh, this unit is the unit that I put the uh, six new relays in. Um, and some people have pointed out that, you know, the relays I picked don't have uh, the electrostatic shield, and that's true, and I know that, um, and it probably, I would rather have relays with electrostatic shield, and if anybody can find some, I could not find any. Um, these, uh, the Kodos that I've got in here are the best ones I could find. Uh, they're guaranteed to be at least a tera ohm. Uh, it would be nice to have, you know, ones that are guaranteed to be 10 or 100 tera ohms. But I think uh, on the, um, especially on the amps and ohm settings, that really doesn't matter uh, because um, the key thing is that they need to be high impedance relative to the, uh, I think there's a 100 giga ohm feed back resistor in the circuit in there, so they need to be high relative to that. Um, now on the volts mode, it might be, your input impedance um, might be limited to how good the relays are. Uh, anyhow, I, this unit seems to be working very well. It's going to be f uh, very useful for me here in the shop. And um, if it's not working to factory specs, I think it's very close to that with this workaround on the, you know, relay availability problem. Um, so um, uh, some people had also said, you know, why did the relays fail? And I was speculating that, you know, maybe, uh, maybe the glass vacuum has failed. A lot of people think it's more likely, you know, contamination. Um, I'm not sure how this unit, you know, how all six of them could have gotten contaminated, but I don't know who owned it before me, so I don't know, you know, if they washed it with some, cr washed the board with something crummy or, or if there's an aging effect there. Uh, there's a lot of speculation out there. I'm not sure exactly what's causing it, but the new ray relays are definitely better. Um, I dead bugged those relays, so, you know, they're in there upside down with, the, with sky wired uh, to those. Um, and so um, it works good, it, and it, I wouldn't put it on a high G shake table or something like that because they're not wired into the board holes. Um, I think they're fine for, you know, normal lab use. Um, you could maybe put some RTV or hot glue on there to hold them still, but I, I was reluctant to do that because I didn't want to put anything in there that could be, you know, a source of contamination. And, and I think the dead bugging is okay as long as you don't put it on a shake table, but I got no plans to do that anyhow. Um, so um, uh, there is, um, I think because these relays don't have electrostatic shield, um, I get um, noise, uh, I think a little more noise out the uh, uh, analog out connector on the back than I think might be normal. Um, this. Uh, this scope display right now is um, 10 seconds per division, and it's uh, one femto amp per division vertical deflection. So I'm I'm well within the three femto amps of that uh, LMC662 AIM, um, and you can see the display is very stable. Uh, there is, and this display I think you know because it's a sampling ADC probably has a low pass action. Um, but if you're looking at the analog signals on the output, uh, there will be more noise. Uh, I don't have a normal one of these that, you know, is uh, brand new or anything like that, so I don't know how much noise is normal on that connector. Um, other people might be able to comment on that. Um, I do have, um, uh, one of the things I did to help with the noise is I have a, in this little Pomona box back there, there's a 10 microfarad ceramic cap uh, that makes, um, when, when working against the 10K output impedance of so the analog output, um, that comes to about, you know, um, uh, I think uh, uh, 0.1 second or something like that. Uh, it's, it's a pretty slow pull, um, 
and it's doing the same thing that this is to low pass that and, and cut some of the noise back. Um, and it had to be in that box if you put it out in the air. Those are millivolt signals back there, so it's pretty tiny signals. Um, uh, so that, that seems to be working pretty good. Um, I did, uh, one other thing I did is I improved my uh, test box a little more. I was going to show you guys that. I added an a insulating um, platform since the box, you know, will be high voltage. I put some high voltage warnings on there to prevent people from getting hurt although I'm the only one that will probably be using this. And I also lined it, um, I lined it with um, fish paper. Uh, so, uh, you know, ideally I want, if I test resistor, I want it kind of floating in free space there, but in case it does touch the walls, that'll, that fish paper will uh, help. Um, and, uh, and, you know, there's the uh, platform that it's on. Um, so hopefully that'll be useful. Um, I do get an occasional jump. You can see there I got a, a jump in the uh, to a few femtoamps. It's still within, probably within the three femtoamp promise of the LMC662, maybe a little wider than that. Um, but uh, maybe if I let this warm up for, you know, 48 hours or something, it would be even better. But I think it's quite good and I'm very happy with it. Um, and um, I think some of the instruments that other people have on EEV blog. It looks like people got them to be a little better than this, but this is amazingly uh, low current, so I'm delighted with the performance here and uh, hope this video is helpful. Uh, Tom Matthews from Matthews Engineering.